Thank you for that. He is holy, and I'm glad that he stoops to commune with us. And what a, what a great... What a great thought that is. He is holy, and yet he wants to have a relationship with us. And that is, that is a blessing. Great love that he has for us. We're going to be in the book of Joshua tonight, so if you want to go ahead and turn over there. Book of Joshua. <clears throat> and we'll obviously look at a familiar story, and it's, it's an exciting story. And I want us to, to look at just a few things uh, in regards to faith here tonight. So we're going to read uh, about 16 verses from chapter 6, and then look at some other verses that will go along with this. But the, the title of the message tonight is Characteristics of Faith. And we'll, we'll see some of these characteristics of faith as we go through this, both from Joshua and from the people that Joshua was leading. And this was a blessing to me and a challenge to me, and I pray that it will be to you as well. Let's pray, and then we will begin this message. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you <clears throat> for this time. We thank you for your goodness to us, and we thank you for your holiness. And Father, we owe you everything. We owe you our lives. And Father, help us to be faithful to you. Help us to to serve you as we should. And Father, as we see what Joshua and we see what, what the people there did, may it remind us and inspire us and just help us to be more faithful to you. Because you, you are a holy God, you are a perfect God, and, and we, we should worship you, we should honor you, we should serve you with our lives. And Father, I pray that you would you bless this time, help it to be instructive for us here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Joshua chapter 6, we start off here in verse number 1. Verses 1 through 5 here, we'll break this down here just a little bit. Verses 1 through 5, we see just a great promise from the Lord here. Uh, verses, verse 1 says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thou sh thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout, with a great joy, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. So we, here we see God's promise, hey, if you do this, I'm going to lay this out for you, tell you exactly what to do, and then here's what's going to happen. You're going to be given the city. The walls are going to come down, you're going to be able to go in, and you're going to be able to conquer this city. Verses 6 through 7 here we see Joshua relaying the plan to others. Verse 6 says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, encompass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns, passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. So here we see kind of a transition of them going and actually doing what God had told Joshua, and then Joshua passing this on to the people, and we see them beginning to do this. So through verse 16, this is what we see, them carrying out this plan. And we're going to read through this here. It's in verse number 9 it says, And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpet and the rearward, came after the ark and the, or the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. I think it's notable here that he had to tell them, Hey, be quiet. Right? I don't know if any of you have kids that like to talk a lot. 
Sometimes we have to remind them to be a little quiet, right? That's how we are, right? We want to talk. We want to, we see something, we want to talk about it, right? But here Joshua had told them, even though the command was, they, you're going to go and shout, Joshua says, now remember, be quiet, and then you're going to shout, right? So I thought that was interesting. Verse 11 says, So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them, but the rearward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned unto the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the manner, after the same manner seven times, only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets, blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. So here we see them carrying out this plan. Now we're coming to the point where they're carrying out this plan. God has told them what to do. They're doing it. Now comes the moment of truth. And of course, we know how the story ends. We know what happens next. These people didn't know, didn't know exactly what was going to come next, right? But they trusted God to give them this victory. So the moment of truth comes. Will the plan work? Will God keep his word? Joshua believes so. Look what he says here in verse number 16, halfway through the verse. Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. <laughs> he knew. He knew what was going to happen based on what God had already told him. What a blessing that is. And he passes that on to the people. Hey, the Lord hath given you the city. This was before they even had the city, the walls had come down, that they had besieged the city. This was before that this, would ha this, this had happened. What faith this was. So I want to see some characteristics of this faith here from Joshua and from the people. Again, we, we have the, the luxury of looking back at this and seeing, hey, we can just read this and see what happened. Verses 17 through the, through the end here, we see detailed what happened. Verse t uh, number 21 says, And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city. Verse number 20, So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. In the story, we tend to focus on what happened here, right? Which, it's pretty awesome what God did. But I think something notable here is, the people leading up to this, they believed God. Joshua believed God, and he passed it on to the people. He said, shout, verse number 16, shout, for the Lord hath given you the city before it was even accomplished. He knew what was going to happen. So three characteristics I want us to look at here tonight. See, Chris would be cutting into this time, but now I'm going to be cutting into the time of chili. And no, I don't want to do that, right? Chili, sour cream, who wants that, right? I'm looking right at Brother Bierke. <laughs> would this be considered a chili buffet? Probably. So three things here I want us to see. Number one is that this faith, their faith, Joshua's faith, and the faith of the people, it was Christ-focused. And what I've always found interesting about this account, about this story, is if we look at the beginning of chapter 6, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho. Now we back up to, verse, or to chapter number 5, and we read verses 13 through the end of chapter 5, and we see a very notable thing happen here. And this has always really stood out to me. I'm sure this stood out to, to Joshua as he was now leading the people to go and take Jericho. Verse 13 says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with, the sword, with his sword drawn, 
in his hand, and Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, and might now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Here we see Joshua has a meeting with, by all appearances, a pre-incarnation, pre-incarnate visit from Jesus Christ. A pre-incarnate Jesus Christ here came and visited with Joshua before they went and did this. So I'm sure that's fresh in the mind, and really there's no reason to believe that as chapter 5 ends and chapter 6 begins, verse number 2 says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given... This is just a continuation of what had just happened. We see here, He is visited by Jesus Christ. He bows down and He worships Jesus Christ. He has this time with Christ, and then as the story unfolds in chapter 6, we see that Joshua is able to just simply believe what God has to say. Is that notable? I think it is. I think that is very notable. So this, the, the, and I believe the number one characteristic here of, of their faith is that it is Christ-focused. He had just met with and just worshipped Jesus Christ. And this, like I said before, this must have really stuck with Joshua as they were going through this and he was leading the people through this. And even in verse number 16, after they had gone through all of this and done exactly what God had told them to do, still Joshua stood up and said, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. I'm sure all of that, that meeting with this captain of the Lord's hosts, was still fresh in the mind of Joshua. He is the one who can do anything. I'm talking about Jesus Christ here. He is the one who can do anything and conquer any foe. And our focus must be on him as we go forth day by day. And if we're going to live a faithful life devoted to him, our focus must be on him. Go with me over to Hebrews chapter 1. Another well-known section of Scripture. Hebrews chapter 1. We see here some great things that Jesus Christ accomplished. And it gives us uh, an idea of just who Jesus Christ is and how powerful he is and what he is capable of. Verse number one says, uh, Hebrews chapter one, verse number one, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom, he also, by whom also he made The worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, And he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. This is who Jesus Christ is. He is God the Son. And here we see, as they were leading into this, this activity, this meeting with Jesus Christ himself. And Joshua and the people having that focus, and they were just simply able to say, Okay, we're going to do whatever it is that you command us, whatever it is that you lay out for us to do. So our focus must be on him. He is all-powerful. He is the one who can do anything. And our focus must be on him. It reminds me of Matthew 14. Go with me there. Matthew chapter 14. Imagine if... Joshua would have just forgotten about what God had told him. Would things have gone as well as what they did? I don't think so. Matthew chapter 14 and verse number 26. This is, of course, when Peter steps out by faith onto the water. Verse number 22 says, 
Matthew 14, 22, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And then we see what happens next. We see the distraction. We see his focus gets off of Christ. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Now, before we're too critical of Peter, I think we experience this probably every day, right? We get distracted. We get our eyes off of Christ. And then we flounder. We have an attitude. We have, a, we have some issue, right? And we have to go back and ask God for forgiveness and repent of whatever it is, whatever attitude, whatever issue we just had, whatever sin. And what a blessing it is that he stretches forth his hand and says, I, I want to help you with this. So we have to keep our eyes focused on him. And when our eyes get off of him, we have to go back and focus again. And when our eyes get off of him again, we have to go back and focus on him again. We are so easily distracted by technology, work, our own thoughts. Let us remain focused on Christ. Let us follow this characteristic that is set forth by Joshua and the people. This is a good example to us here that we see in Joshua. May our faith be Christ-focused and not focused on anything else because that's, that's not going to amount to anything. It's Christ-focused. It must be focused on Him. The second thing is this. It needs to be a consistent faith. So Christ-focused, and then number two is consistent, a consistent faith. Consistency is important. It was seven days for the people doing this. A very repetitive thing that they did for seven days. Sometimes the same thing, day after day or week after week, can get really old. Have you experienced this? Yeah, right? Maybe it's going to work every day. <sighs> right? Maybe it's dealing with the same person at work every day. And you know you're going to go in and... They're going to say something that's annoying. Ugh, i got to go do that again. <laughs> but if it's something that God wants us to be doing, like go to work, God wants us to work, <laughs> right? Um, God wants us to be training our, our children. God wants us to be doing a lot of different things day by day, week by week. Those things can get, can get old at times. But we have to understand that if it's something that God wants us to be doing, and if it's important to him that we be doing it, then he's going to bless it, and we just need to be consistent in it. And these people, they were consistent in what they were supposed to be doing. You know, maybe the temptation was to say, seven days? Why not three? Right? Why not three, and then we go in? Right? Find an open door somewhere, and we go in the city, and we take care of business. Right? But that's not what God said. God said seven days. And we see that the people and Joshua stayed consistent for those seven days and did exactly what they were supposed to do as laid out in God's plan for them. And are we consistent? Well, I think the only way we're going to stay consistent is if we stay, going back to point number one, is if we stay Christ-focused. We need to be consistent, and we need to be Christ-focused.
focused. Again, sometimes things can get pretty old and monotonous, but we just need to dab our eyes on Christ and know that what he wants us to be doing, there will eventually be blessing because of us just staying faithful in those things. I want to look at a few verses here that go along with this. Luke chapter 18. <clears throat> we'll go through these here quickly. Luke chapter 18 and verse number 1. Luke 18 verse number 1 it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And then he goes through this parable of just keeping on, just just coming and coming and coming and just keep praying for something, maybe praying for someone, praying for some issue, even though maybe it seems like there's no movement in that situation. We ought to just keep praying for it, praying for that issue, praying for that situation, praying for that person. And this was talked about some before. And just keep on praying for that. And God will honor that. 2 Corinthians, let's go there quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 1 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Skip down to verse number 16. It says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The annoyances, maybe the the physical ailments that slow us down, different issues of life, those things are temporary, and we just need to keep pressing on for Christ and have our eyes on Him and be consistent in the things that we're supposed to be doing and serving Him and honoring Him. Verse number 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Had the people seen the fall of Jericho yet? They had not seen it yet. And yet they stayed faithful and consistent in what they were supposed to be doing for those seven days, knowing that it was going to come because God had promised it. Verse number 18 continues on, For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The temporal things will affect us in this life, but we need to be consistent and press on for the things that are eternal that have eternal consequence and God will bless that go to Galatians chapter 6 just over a little bit here Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not go to Ephesians chapter 3 Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 13 it says wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you which is your glory for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he should grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. There, there will be strength and there will be power that will come if we will stay focused on him and rely on his strength and not rely upon our own strength. Verse number 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him which is, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Now, the people of the people following Joshua, the Israelites following Joshua, and Joshua himself had not seen the fall of Jericho yet. They knew it was coming based on God's promise, but I can only imagine when they saw those walls come down and they saw finally 
the siege of Jericho complete, they probably just had to stand in awe and say, that was an amazing work of God. And it, it went far beyond even what I had comprehended that it would be. It was just complete destruction and annihilation of this city. And I'm sure the people had not even imagined what it was going to be. And here it was unfolding, and unfolding in front of them. And I think it's the same for us too. I think we could have more blessing. We could have more fruitfulness. We could have more encouragement. We could have more of a lot of different spiritual things if we would just trust him and just stay consistent day by day. But again, we get off track. Let us remember that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So let us be consistent and let us have our eyes on him. Hebrews 12. We'll look at this and we're going to look at the last point here. Hebrews chapter 12. And verse number 5. Hebrews 12, 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation... And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Let's not faint. Let's not get weary when God is dealing with us and challenging us to go on for more, for more things for him. And we need reminders of this. And all these, all these verses that we just read are good reminders to us. Hey, faint not. And just keep going and have a consistent faith. So a Christ-focused faith and a consistent faith. And we also need to have, number three, a committed faith. A committed faith. And I, I kind of, I kind of uh, am amazed by what these people did. Here, they, they simply stepped out by faith into a fairly dangerous situation. And they simply trusted God. Once God shared the plan and they went out there that first day, they were committed at that point. Um, you know, I think of, uh, I've, I've read and listened to some things about uh, different people going to war, different, you know, like, like the Navy SEALs. You know, it's kind of interesting to listen to things about the Navy SEALs and what they go and accomplish and kind of their tactics and what they do. And they like to have either ultimate surprise, like when they, when they fly in and they fast rope down and they go into, they like to hit a place fast and have the element of surprise and then just get in there fast and get it done. Or they like to kind of sneak in, right? Either by sea or by land and really sneak in there, maybe under cover of darkness and get in there and, and take care of business that way. <laughs> but when you look at what the people here did, that is the direct opposite of what would be recommended in warfare today and probably warfare back then too. Probably better to, to have some element of surprise and have some cover and have something on your side that's going to actually help you in this warfare. But these people did not do that. <laughs> they went out and they compassed the city and they were out in the open and they step out day one and they just keep going and they do it day one and day two, and day three, and they go on and on until day seven, and they just remain faithful, and they're committed in that. Day one, they step out, and they think, okay, we're here now. Uh, we're we're going to do this. So day one, they're committed, and they just kept going back and going back. Every day, they would go back, like verse number 14, and the second day, they compassed the city once and returned into the camp, and so they did six days. So they went back to the camp, and they could have made the decision then. That seemed really dangerous. I don't want to do that again for, <laughs> for a second or a third or, and, and so on. And yet they did it because they were committed to what God had told them to do, and they trusted God, and they were committed at that point, and they just kept going and going and going. And that's what, that's what commitment is. You just step out, and you just keep going, no matter what the cost no matter what the issue, you just keep going and you're committed to it. I think of Gideon. Go to Judges with me here uh, just for a minute. We'll read a couple of verses about Gideon. 
this popped into my mind as I was considering this. Judges 7 and verse number 15. Here, Gideon, Gideon's numbers had already been reduced quite substantially down to 300 from thousands down to 300. Verse 15 says, And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. So here again we see Gideon not just going into it blindly, right? Going and fighting blindly. But we see here he has a promise from God, just like, just like Joshua did, just like the people did. And the Lord hath delivered unto your hand the, the host of Midian. So he knew what was going to come if he would just believe it. And it appears that he did. Verse 16 says, And he divided the 300 men into the three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do so, so shall ye do. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets, also on every side of all the camp, and say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And uh, so Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they, and they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. At that point, they're committed, right? And they got to go. They got to just keep going. They've made all that noise. They're now showing light, and they're shouting, Right? Their position has been given away. <laughs> so they're committed. And they continue on. And we see a great victory for Gideon. We see God provide this. So we see there, again, you know, this, this promise to Gideon, and then he's committed to that. They, they commit themselves. And I have, to, I have to question myself, and I pose the question to all of us here tonight. Are we committed to what God would have us be doing? in service to him, and whatever it is, whatever, whatever the command, whatever the plan is for you and for me, are we, are we committed to it? We have all kinds of promises to look at in God's word. We see all kinds of things already accomplished in the lives of people around us, in our own lives, and we see the goodness of God. And we see promise after promise in God's word and in our own lives being fulfilled. And will we keep following him? Again, it's not just us just deciding just to follow someone who hasn't shown us anything. He's shown us much. He's told us much from his words. What a blessing that is. And in Joshua, he had the same thing. He, he had this visit from Jesus Christ. He had this command. And then we see he just, he just follows it. He just believes and just does what God tells him to do. So are we this way? Are we consistent? Are we committed? And we're not going to be consistent or committed if our focus is not on Christ. And again, it's easy for our focus to get off, to get misplaced on something else, on someone else, on some other issue of life. It's so easy. We're all guilty of this. And we have to renew our focus on Christ. What does he want us to be doing because if he gives us something to do, he plans out something for us to do, he will give us the power to do it. He will help us do it. Just like he's, I mean, countless times. We see it just here in Jericho. We saw it with Gideon. We could look at countless other, other accounts from the word of God where God says to do something to someone and they simply step out by faith and they do it. And he provides a great victory for them. And we need to look at these examples and be consistent and be committed and, and have our focus on Christ where it should be. And we should do that in the new year as we face 2024. Um, there are a lot of things to distract us, you know, things in our personal lives, things in the world. You know, you look at, you look at the news and there's lots of stuff going on, lots of crazy stuff going on. And it would be easier for us to lose our focus but we need to stay focused on him. Go back to his word, meditate on his word, pray, and just ask him day by day, even hour by hour, to be helping us to stay focused on him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time. We thank you for the admonitions and the, the examples that we see 
in your word. And Father, I pray that you would help us to take these examples and Father, that we would that we would just simply follow you. Stay Christ focused and be consistent and be committed. Father, we need you. We need your help. And Father, I pray that you would help us in this new year to go farther and to do more for you than maybe what we've ever done. And, and maybe we would be stretched. Maybe we'd be challenged. But Father, if it's something that you want us to do, just like, the, just like Joshua and, and the children of Israel, if it's something that you want us to do, you will show us and you will equip us and you will provide the victory. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stand together. We'll have a brief moment of invitation. Appreciate that challenge to be Christ-focused, to be consistent, to be committed in our faith. And if you're like me, living by faith that way is not a given. It doesn't come easily. It doesn't come automatically. It's, it only comes through the power of God when we are given over to that. The Lord doesn't ask us to approve his methods. He just calls us to follow them. And if we'll obey and we'll follow, then he'll do his work. But if we try to do his work our way, he's not going to bless that. these people surrounded the city and walked around the city once per day for six days, did they hear mocking, jeers, cat calls from the wall after the people realized that they're just going to walk around once and leave? Did they start mocking these Jews, these Israelites? Very possibly. Could that have eroded the faith of these people? Could have. Could they have been grumbling in their heart? Is this really going to do anything? Are we just playing a game here? What's the point? But then the power of God came. And then everyone could see that God was at work. It made it all worth it. And they were so glad that they stayed faithful. They were so glad they did it God's way. They were so glad they were Christ-focused, consistent, and committed. May we be that way. Thank you for your attention tonight. Appreciate the messages that we heard and how they fit together. Focusing on Christ, getting to know Him, getting to know each other and, and, and the knowledge of Christ, praying for each other, and being steadfast in our faith. Following God's commands, His methods, and then watching him do his work. It's his work. We may as well do it his way. And when we do, we won't regret it. We'll give him all the glory where, right where it belongs. Right where it belongs. Thank you for being with us tonight. I see some visitors are here. And we, we're, we're so thankful that you've come. And I hope that you stay. We are, we're having a special meal. I'm sure you've smelled it. And uh, it smells good. We're gonna have, we have a chili supper planned. And we're going to stay and and fellowship and eat and then play some games afterward and so we hope that you stay with us and and uh, spend some time uh, with us we're glad that you came tonight we had a an earlier start time tonight five o'clock instead of our normal six o'clock time and so we're going to dismiss in just a moment